You can't cut this up with others. I can't call your mom and tell her what your answer was. I can't even find out. But I want to know, and we want to do that. Where you guys are at with it, so we can better equip you with the tools to deal with these boundaries. So you're going to text 22333. That's just the person you're texting. That's the number you're texting. The text is being sent to 2233. And now you'll tell me how far it's too far. So, for example, if you put that kissing is too far for you, that means that you're okay with hugging, holding hands, and dodging and correcting. But kissing is just too much. And if you put sexual intercourse is too far for you, then we yeah, get that is too much. But I'm okay with all the sex you can have to make all of that. And that's not really interesting anything, so you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it. Yeah. So go ahead and don't start popping up as you go. I'll turn it on to you guys if I don't want you to text. I'm going to get there. Okay. You guys are so immature every time. So, so far, 67% of you are okay with everything but that? Okay, here we go. Massaging, correcting. So, we're coming in here that hugging and holding hands is as far as we're going. Alright. I know that's more of a death to get the test done because I will not need that to 60%. I'll give you guys like 30 more seconds.
And in it says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders. Did anybody notice that female prostitutes are in there? I don't know how I feel about it now. But okay, let's go to the second verse. In the second verse, which is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21, we're told that Paul is saying, I am afraid. When I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be great over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual sin, and the in which they have indulged. In the third verse that we found, which we find in um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Our next verse, which is found in um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Right? But among you, that phrase is referring to among you, us Christians, amongst this crowd of believers that have gathered together for God. You are God's holy people. And it says that there shouldn't even be a hint. Do you understand what that means? Not even a hint. That means not even the thought of a suggestion of possible sexual morality. Forget the act, not even a hint. Let's go to the next verse. And the next verse is in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Put to death. In the next verse, uh, which is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual morality. Guys, it is God's will. Do you know what that, that means? It is His desire, His heart, His intentional purpose that you all should be sanctified. And in order to do that, we're told that we should avoid sexual immorality. So let's go to the next verse. And this is our last verse um, that we've been going through before, and it, it casts off this entire discussion and thought about sex and sexual morality and what is right and wrong, and exactly where God feels that sex is appropriate, and that's marriage. So in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, we're told marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage that kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. For God will judge the adultery and the sexually immoral. Now, you know, we've gone over the slides and you, I think you get the point. God does not want us to indulge in sexual immorality. But more than that, I've given you what he doesn't want. But do you really understand, you know, what sexual morality is? I told you to stay away from, for example, if I told you to stay away from Hermann Hermann Hermann, you'd be like, oh, yeah, no, I told you to stay away from Hermann Hermann Hermann. We don't even know what that is. Look, what if that is, um, you know, global anaconda? I need you to find what that is. You need to know the definition. What is what it is in your life? What special morality is to, to, to be away from? So I'm going to offer you a definition. And just like the nerd that I am, I guess, uh, I looked up the definition of sexual morality. I went to Western Dictionary and pulled it up. So here I have the um, definition for sexual. The definition for sexual is of relating to or associated with sex or the sex. For example, I'm a male, I'm a female. That's our sex. Um, or two, having or involving sex. You know, the things that the birds and the bees do, supposedly. Um, so, immorality. Let's define that. And immorality is defined, according to Webster's Dictionary, as not moral 
or are conflicting with traditional principles. So I told you things, oh dude, that's a completely clear definition of sexual immorality. I know sexual means sexual, and immorality means not moral. So boom, I know exactly what it is, right? What kind of 